From Spring Festival to climate change and China's global leadership, a look at the stories making headlines across China and beyond. Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu and this is The Heat. China rings in the year of the rooster with a big spring festival celebration. But spring festival isn't the only big story in China right now. President Xi Jinping just wrapped up a visit to Europe. The economy has been declared the world's fastest growing and climate change remains at the top of the agenda. To explore these stories, Yun Sun is a senior associate with the East Asia program at the Stimson Center, a Washington DC based public policy institute. Song Zhang is the chief correspondent for the Washington DC Bureau of Shanghai Wenhui Daily. Jean Ma is the chief China economist at the Institute of International Finance. And with us from our newsroom, CGTN correspondent Han Peng. And Han Peng, let me start with you. The Chinese president, Xi Jinping, went to Switzerland. He addressed the World Economic Forum as well as the United Nations. Now, his speech to the World Economic Forum was a very staunch defense of globalization and what he called interconnected growth. And at the United Nations, he talked about a world that will have no more nuclear weapons. When you look at these themes uh, that he talked about during this visit to Switzerland, uh, do you see China gradually assuming a world leadership, global leadership role here? Well, actually, I feel a big irony happening in the world because globalization was uh, something that started from the West, but is now under the threat from major Western powers. We have seen a Trump victory in the United States. We have seen Brexit in the UK. And uh, we have seen Donald Trump threatening to uh, raise the tariffs on Made in China product by 45 percent. And also he's threatening to uh, raise taxes on other countries like uh, countries like Mexico. So the, this isolation is really changing the, the trend, the global trend of globalization at this moment. And uh, what President Xi, the message from President Xi is that uh, China used to be suspicious and it also used to have some doubts about globalization in the past because it fears that uh, the economy and also its sovereignty will be undermined because of the uh, foreign products flooding in, into the country. But now China becomes the biggest beneficiary, one of the biggest beneficiaries of globalization. And that is because China embraced globalization in full scale. And also he says that uh, this is the globalization has become a trend that no country can really reverse. And in that way, President Xi also mentioned about trade wars, saying that the China does not want a trade war, but if the United States is really continuing with the policy, he warns there will be danger of something happening like that. You, you know, uh, Han Peng, they're talking about Donald Trump and the fact that he wants to impose tariffs, he wants to raise these protectionist barriers. If you look at that speech that President Xi Jinping made at the uh, World Economic Forum. He talked about globalization. It was a very outward-looking speech, a very international speech. Yet here, in that same week, it was inauguration week here, yeah? Donald Trump made his inauguration speech. Uh, it was a very inward-looking speech. It was all about America first. Uh, do you think relations between these two countries are going to change radically under President uh, Trump? I think people generally expect there are going to be some changes to this bilateral relations. On one hand, like you pointed out, the U.S. is adopting a very different policy compared to the previous administrations. On the other hand, China still sees its bilateral relationship as the most important for not only the two countries but also the world. Then based on the inauguration speech of President Trump and President Xi's speech in Davos, we see that almost a scene where the Americans are retreating from the world stage and leaving, not necessarily, but a lot of people call it a vacuum for China to step in and assume that leadership role. Song, uh, President Xi also talked about China's One Belt, One Road initiative. Uh, it's a huge signature initiative that China has launched to reach out to the rest of the world, not just regionally, it's going on beyond that. Uh, how do you see this particular project uh, meet the needs of some of the world's big challenges. We've got you know, a refugee crisis, economies are stagnating. How does this remedy that? Well, this uh, One Belt, One Road uh, initiate was uh, started uh, in uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, by now, I think more than 60 countries have already joined. That represents about 4.4 uh, billion uh, kind of population and I think 21 trillion kind of GDP. Uh, and uh, mm, I think uh, 
these kind of uh, countries, especially those in uh, South Asia, Middle uh, kind of uh, Asia, and the Middle East, and uh, also uh, Eastern uh, European countries, uh, I think they are facing basically uh, three to four uh, challenges to uh, develop their economy. One is uh, infrastructure, especially transportation uh, infrastructure. The second is investment, and the third is technology and uh, trade. And uh, in the last uh, four decades, China has uh, uh, developed a lot. And uh, China now is not only number two uh, economy in the world, but also a uh, leading kind of uh, trade power in the world, and also uh, increasingly becoming a uh, kind of investor in different countries. So I think China is capable to uh, uh, help each other with those kind of countries. And uh, I have uh, visited different countries, including Thailand and uh, Sri Lanka, and I saw a lot of mega projects going on over there. And also, uh, when it comes to uh, this uh, investment, um, this AIIB, this uh, BRICS Bank, mm -hmm. have brought a lot of uh, kind of investment from different countries, and uh, they can, uh, I think, tremendously uh, establish the new kind of industries in these kind of uh, countries. And also trade is a very important fact. And uh, we see in 2016, the uh, trade of China with these kind of countries is approximately one trillion uh, US dollar. That is 25% of China's uh, total uh, uh, kind of foreign trade. Uh, so I think China believes many kind of challenges faced by these kind of countries in the region mm -hmm. are basically due to economic uh, kind of uh, reasons. If this kind of uh, uh, OBOM program will bring economic growth uh, to these kind of countries, and uh, I think uh, uh, the political and the security situation will, becoming, will be becoming much better in the future. So we won't see a lot of uh, refugee uh, crisis in right. the future, hopefully. Gene, uh, the Chinese economy has slowed down, uh, but it's still doing relatively well at 6.7% growth. How important is China's economic growth to the world economy? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, China's economic growth was surprisingly good uh, last year. You may remember at the beginning of 2016, people are very concerned. Uh, we got a stock market crash, currency is very unstable. Uh, a lot of industrial sector was in deep, deep trouble uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, but throughout the year, the growth stabilized. But in fact, we see a little bit uptick at the end of the year. Uh, housing market was still very strong. Um, China's economy is much larger now than, say, five years ago. So in that sense, the economic activity added by 6.7% growth is almost the same as 10% growth five years ago. Right. So that's why we at IF, um, Institute of International Finance, we have done our own calculation. At a 6.7% growth, China accounted for about half of all the global growth in last year. Um, as a comparison, US or EU, each maybe contributed about one-fifth of the growth. So China remains the biggest growth driver uh, right now uh, in, in last year. Right. Mm. Han Peng, we see how important Chinese growth is to the international economy, um, and it's experiencing a slowdown now. And we've seen that kind of domino effect uh, and how uh, slowdown in Chinese growth affects other countries, especially countries that produce commodities that China consumes. Um, how does the Chinese government plan on creating economic growth this year, 2017? Well, actually, it's very interesting if you look into the past year. This 6.7% uh, growth is the hit, has hit China's 20-year uh, low. But uh, if you look in the world, this 6.7% is the highest in, among all the other countries in the world. And also, this, uh, there is also a very important bottom line for China's economic growth, which is 6.5%. Because if you do the math, actually, uh, President Xi Jinping has uh, promised that China will double its uh, GDP of 2010 in, by 2020. And uh, if it really want to achieve this goal and fulfill the pledge to its people and also to the world, China has to make sure that it, the, it keeps the 6.5% average growth rate in the next f uh, four years, because it's only four years before 2020. So 6.5% is very important. So how can China really achieve that with all this economic slowdown? 
inside the country, the, uh, China is now trying to readjust its growth model by uh, shifting its uh, labor-intensive industries into something more about innovation and environmental-friendly industries. And also outside the country, China is to, trying to uh, initiate this One Belt, One Road initiative, which is about reviving the ancient Silk Road and building a logistic corridor linking the East Asia to the uh, west border of the uh, Eurasian continent, which is the Baltic Sea. So by having all these construction, infrastructure construction outside, China is uh, not only uh, some may argue dumping some of the uh, excessive industries, but it's also benefiting countries there. And also China is getting a lot of investment and rewarding investment there. And in this way, China can also uh, find a way to really boost its economy and also mutually benefiting with other countries too. Gene, just one question on the economy. At 6.7%, we have millions of new job seekers coming onto the market every year. Does it meet those demands for jobs in China with that kind of growth rate? That's an excellent question. Um, growth rate is much lower than, say, eight or 10 years ago, no doubt. Right. Back then, uh, in a decade ago, China was growing at 13, 14% in real term. Right now, yeah. growth is only half of that. But still, China created about 30 million new jobs last year, almost the same amount that's generated much, with much higher growth rate. And the reason is that the structure of this economy has changed a lot. We see the heavy industrial sector, capital intensive, but not labor income sector are slowing down. At the same time, service sector picking up, which is a much more labor intensive. So even though the growth slowed down quite a bit, we do not see much uh, pressure in the labor market. I can give you data. In fact, in the lower end uh, job market right now, the survey in 100 largest cities, uh, there are still 113 jobs for every 100 job seekers. There's actually more jobs than job seekers in the low end labor market. Uh, Yun, there was one big social change in China uh, last year, and that was uh, the one-child policy became the second child policy. And looking at some figures that were released uh, in China, uh, figures that were released by the Chinese Health and Family Planning Commission, it said that the number of births in China last year went up to 17, went up 17.686 billion. That was a rise of 7.9%. Um, what kind of impact is that going to have on China? Since socially in the Chinese family, traditional Chinese families, the expectation is that you have more than one child. Right. So this two children policy in, uh, to a very large extent meet that social demand. I think the Chinese families would like to have the second child. Right. So we see a lot of families seeking the second child at this point. Then in the long run, I think in about um, 20 years, this new baby boom yeah. boomers will turn into a new generation of labor force for the Chinese economy, which is a problem that the Chinese economy it's faces. It's going to be a much expanded labor force in 20 years, right? It will be. And it will, there, there is going to be a 20-year gap. So hopefully this is not too late. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming back to what's happening right now. Uh, Donald Trump's been talking about protectionist measures, as I mentioned, you know, putting up barriers, etc. China is a major exporter of goods. How does China combat that? I think China has been already in the process to enhance domestic uh, consumption. And uh, previously, uh, China had uh, basically three engines for economic growth. One is uh, export, one is investment, and uh, another one is domestic consumption. And uh, now in the last uh, five years, I think uh, domestic uh, consumption has occupied more and more important uh, kind of role. Uh, in this uh, uh, kind of economic growth. And uh, especially in 2016, as I heard, uh, the domestic consumption um, is contributing about 64% uh, uh, of our economic growth. And uh, the investment is uh, contributing about 42% uh, of our economic growth. And uh, export contributed uh, minus 6.8%. So that is to say, I think uh, China in the future will continue to push this kind of domestic uh, consumptions. I think uh, uh, China's dependency on uh, foreign trade will be less. This is one thing. And uh, the second is about uh, industry upgrade. And uh, China has been um, very much emphasizing to upgrade our uh, kind of industries. Uh, a few uh, years ago, we are the largest uh, kind of uh, manufacturing uh, power for the uh, like textile, these uh, toys. But uh, uh, now I think China is moving toward uh, uh, this kind of uh, 
uh, mechanical industry, uh, high-speed uh, trains, and uh, automobile, and uh, uh, this pharmaceutical uh, kind of uh, industries. I think this uh, kind of effort will be continued, and China is having now 2025. China manufacturing 2025, this kind of uh, plan uh, going on. And uh, the last is about uh, innovation. And right. uh, uh, Xi has been talking, Xi Jinping has been talking mm -hmm. about uh, people's uh, innovation. And especially in the last uh, couple of years, we see this IT industry and uh, also e-commerce industry have been seeing very significant uh, innovation. I think this will continue. Right. What's the, uh, the interesting thing, of course, is that all of this is being done by design. This was planned some time ago. I mean, mm -hmm. talking about innovation, talking about a consumer economy, mm -hmm. the Chinese planned that. They wanted to move away from a manufacturing economy to a consumer mm -hmm. economy. So in that respect, mm -hmm. they're prepared for what's happening here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, they prepared. If, if these protectionist measures go up, mm -hmm. it's not going to affect the Chinese economy that much, is it? It, it will uh, affect, yeah. definitely. But uh, I think uh, export itself is uh, now uh, occupying about uh, less than 20% of China's total uh, okay. e economy in the mm -hmm. last uh, one year. So I think it will continue to decline, and we hope this will not uh, affect China's economy uh, dramatically.